okay so let's start with the xor not it's not the xor or end operator sometimes we can deal with the or operator also we will see how this garage and neural network is being used we can perform the neural network output for this target column right so let's go with the basic fundamental that uh, what are the so we we have very simple network over here this simple this network is called end operator right we have we have already studied in the in the in the previous sessions that this end operator is dealing with the different outputs right different uh, cross sections part right so here we have two features two inputs and this is the output column right so our first point of discussion is on the basis of these two inputs what will be the output here right if you are going to create this plot right this is the uh, let's say i'm going to create this this uh, uh, this graph over here right this is the graph let's say right we are going to create this x x direction right then we have something for c for v so let me have this y direction over here right so this y direction will go upward and let me divide this thing right so we have certain coordinates let's say this is 0 and somewhere at the x axis we have 1 this is y direction and we have 1 at the y level when we are creating the coordinates over here so of course this would be origin represented by 0 and 1 0 0 sorry here we will have somewhere 1 comma 1 all right here we will have on the x axis we have 0 and for the y axis we have 1 right so i'll call it 1 similarly for this x axis we have 1 and y axis we have 0 so i'll call it 1 0 if you make the similarity between this graph you will feel this 1 1 is represented by this 1 1 this 0 1 is represented by this input factor this 1 0 is represented by this feature value and 0 0 we have first records over here now for more picture value we have 0 0 3 times 0 on only when both inputs are 1 we will be getting 1 right so we are going to think about this target column when we are going to get this one when both the inputs are 1 so where we have this one you can see here we have 1 here we have zeros here we have 0 here for these two inputs i am having 0 again right now for more clarity i am going to fill this value as whole term because this is the one factor rest i am not going to fill because they are not one this value is only one so i am going to fill this factor right now we know these three are zero this is zero this is zero this is the output column is zero based on inputs here we have only one so what i'll do i'll create a separate line can you see this separate line right and this separate line will be will divide 1 1 or this one part because the output for this neuron or this value is 1 for rest r we are having 0 so this is the graphical representation for my this one so exactly what i am doing i am going to segregate my 0 0 0 3 inputs 0 by 1 right so this is the partition part we are going to now this is the fundamental objective for our and we are going to for our problem and we are going to solve this problem using neural network right so how neural network will play important role here so let's go back with the 
with the neural network first we have first neuron over here right so this would be first neuron first input uh, i i can say in either word right so this would be second input here i'll have the first input hidden layer or i'll have the second hidden layer right or as the output layer i'll have this final layer when i'll create the connection for this value so we will see like this one right so for this connection we will see this is the starting point and this is the ending point again we are going to create this connect this neurons to the next adjacent similarly for this neuron to this one and for this neuron to this neuron, this is called dense network and now for these networks i'm going to connect this uh, this one and i'm going to connect this to the this one and finally i'll get the output so what would be the output so let me see suppose we will have zero zero so finally output should be zero is this correct correct this is the first record if you go above so this is zero zero it will produce zero so my neural network or created model should also produce zero zero and output as zero now for zero one it should produce zero again because it's an end operator similarly using third records if i am having g one and zero finally we'll get zero here because either input is zero output will be zero when we have both the ones so my neural network should produce one so we are going to create sequential network for this neural network simple neural network right and weights we are going to produce it it's our own choice what kind of weights are there and model itself will produce the weights there right? so what i do uh, i'm going to try i'm going to import num pi as num p num n p this is my first method i'm going to cre uh, create then using from the keras model from keras dot models i'm going to import sequential right and the second library I'm going to import from the Keras dot layers. I'm going to produce my layers. I'm going to import dense. So what is dense? It's complete whole network. Each node is connected to the next one. Each node connection established between the nodes here. Right? So this is called dense network here. Right? Now for the next part i'm going to create end gate inputs for this end gate input i'm going to create the inputs for my features value and the target value so for feature i'll get ax and then np dot array i'm going to take all the inputs so all the inputs i'm going to create my array type and this is first is 0 comma 0 and second i'll take my second input second records that's a 0 comma 1 the third records i'm having 1 comma 0 and when i go outside for these final records i'm having 1 comma 1 as the inputs here right for the y column which is target for my neural network i'm going to create same array pass the entire uh, matrix truth table into the numpy array and for this one i am going to create this is zero and this is zero for the respective inputs i will getting the output right for the third input i will getting zero and for the final input i will getting one right so this is how i, I ask one doubt yes sure i understand on the basis of these features respective output will be represented by target column all right now i'm going to create a sequential model here right so this is going to create my sequential model using model 
and then I'm going to create sequential. So this sequential, because every node is going forward, this is forward pass, right? So when we have backward, because when we have output connection to the input again, so we will call it backward network. But every neural network is sequential. They are not having any parallel background here. So first this model, this node will be calculated, then only this will calculate it. Once all four nodes are calculated, finally we will get the output of this output. It's not in like first this is concurrently these layers is being processed, concurrently these layers are being processed. No, it's not ha going to happen like this. We are going to process all these layers concurrently. One this one, first, second, third, and then finally this layer. This is the reason it's called model is equal to sequential, right? Now I'm going to add a dense layer, right? This dense layer with one neuron and sigmoid activation function, right? So what does it mean? So let me create one uh, dense layer here, model dot add. I'm going to add this one. And this is called dense and for this units. So units means how many layers or how many like uh, inputs I'm having, right? So units is equal to one and for input dimension. What is the dimension of my input? It's a two. So I'll write input dimension is equal to two. These are parameters already defined. You can see inputs, activation, right? So you can see the description part also input where activation is here created layers and so on. So we will see what is the activation again. And if we are going to create the activation here, so we are going to calculate sigmoid. It's just passing the function. So we just create the dense and uh, let me create a model that on add. We have any one neuron and sigmoid function and here we have input dimension 2 and units is equal to 1 right so finally we are going to ready to compile our model so how to compile so model dot compile inside the model i'm going to create this loss so for this loss i'm going to choose mean squared error so this is predefined function inside the compile function uh, method and we are just giving the assignment so for optimizer so optimizer is used to uh, to assign the weights or optimize the weights how we are going to change the weights uh, accordingly so this is going to create adam right and then for the metrics part, we are for the accuracy purpose, we are going to create accuracy, right? So this is our metrics function. And finally, we are going to compile our model, right? So this is this neural network is just connected and we have created this one, right? Then we will have to train the model, right? So I'm going to train this model. So we are going to model dot fit for this. We have this fit model x comma y and then epochs is equal to 1000 and then verbose is equal to 0. Right? So, so let me go one by one here. So units is equal to 1 means we have one dense layer. Right? Input dimension is equal to 2 means we have 2 dimension like 2 inputs function or we have 2 input function over here 2 neurons at the left hand side at the input layer. Activation means at each node we will get use sigmoid function which is co associated with the e1 plus e raised to power minus x right. So here we have sigmoid function associated with each layer. It's our choice. We can change this function. You just change the name here 
and you will get the another activation function. Once we have created the layers for my neural network, we are going to compile mean square error. So what is the mean square error? Root of y hat, this is the predicted and the actual output and the square of this output and then the square root of this one. So this is the summation of all the outputs there, right? Whenever we have going to instance there, we are going to mean square error at every time. How we are going to perform, how my, my model is going to very poor, it is very good. What is the perfection level? So we are going to. Optimizer means we are going to change the, uh, the entire weights, how the weights are there. So of course, this output will be associated some weights. So W0, W1, W2, right? So W01, it will be W, uh, W10, right? And so on W11, W12, and like this one, right? So we will get, get modified layers, modify weights, and then finally we are going to matrix accuracy, right? This is the accuracy, like how we are going to perform this model. Then finally we are going to perform this epochs, right? So what's the epochs? Okay, have I uh, run this model? All right. So it's just creating the epochs, and this is finally train. Now we Can are going. What is epochs? Epochs. Okay. Just wait. I'm going just giving some example there. Let's say we have 2000 training data set, right? So 2000 training data set means we are having 2000 records, right? So in the end or operation records for the end or operation, we have only four records, right? You can see from this chart only. We have only four records, but when we go down in this example, we have 2000 records, right? For this 2000 records, we are going to use, we are going to divide into 500 batches, right? Because we do not train, we, the, like as a human being or as a model, we do not learn the things in a single epoch, right? In a single pass. So we need multiple passes, right? Like we do not recognize any, like if I give the image of my uh, face to you, so you, so you, you will say like, like kindly give me 10 or 20 images for yourself. So I'll give, provide more and more images and you will check all the images and memorize my face there. Similarly, we divide all the training data set into 500 batches. This is called batches, right? So for this 2000 records, if you will divide the entire 2000 records, it will be 400, sorry, it will be 500 batches. And how many iterations will be required? It will require four iterations. Is it clear? we require four iterations to train all 2000 training records we have 500 batches right now yeah. right now suppose for any image let's say we have for any image we have batch size, let's say it's giving batch size is equal to 64. They have already assigned this value and they are going to keep it constant, right? For this batch size, we are going to proceed. What's the next part? We are going to calculate the epochs, right? Let's say I'm going to say this epoch is 24 right this is already fixed for my training purpose 
so for my training data set right so training data set is of training data is actually 60000 right i am having more records there right so let me calculate how many iterations do i record required right so in single epoch can you analyze in single epoch in single epoch how many iterations do we require in single records i need 60000 because this entire data set will pass through this divided into 64 right so i'll keep remember this 64 at single pass can you do, do you understand this this concept yeah right so i'm going to deal entire 60000 records and dividing this in a 64 let's say this is a kind of bucket right and this bucket is size of 64 only so at a single pass i will pass this 64 and the next 64 the next 64 the next 64 so to carry this 60000 records at a single pass i can carry only 64 data set so how many how many times i'll have to carry that's the iteration so this will be around 938 if you divide this value it will be around 938 right so this many times your weights will be updated because what will happen in 938 times your neural network weights these weights will be updated every time it will check the accuracy every time it will tune the optimal solution find the getting find the relevant result and then right and uh, and then for this like for 24 epochs now we have div we have seen this 24 epochs are there right for 24 epochs how many iterations are required i'll multiply this 938 into 24 so these many this this value will be 22512 right so overall 22,512 iterations will be there, right? So this iteration for my single epoch, but if you have set this epoch, like if suppose you just set epoch is equal to 1, so how many iterations required? Only 938, right? Now we have set 24 epochs, so we are having these many iterations did you get this point yeah. yeah yeah i understand things we have first we have training data set right then we have epochs right or like before epochs we have batch size for this batch size right then we have iterations all right and so on so we are going to calculate accordingly now going back to the operations we have epochs 1000 epochs so it will update the data set 1000 times right so what's the next part of this one so next part is i am going to test my model how it is just being uh, like like updated and how we are going to check the code so for this i'm going to print the prediction right and then finally going to print the oh sorry model dot predict and what what I am going to predict x, right? So this is my prediction part. You can see it's just predicting the probability, right? On the basis of this probability, what's it? If probability is below 0.5, so it will represent it by zero, 
it's showing this probability a probability for second input below 0.5 it's again 0.0, uh, 0. a probability you can see below 0, uh, 0.5 it's again 0 here we have probability greater than 0 0.5 which means this is 1 right how you can improve this one right so for this improvement we so before that let me evaluate this model so how we are going to evaluate for this we are going to create the loss right we are going to calculate the accuracy so for this loss and accuracy we are going to check model and then evaluate function evaluate method over x and y over features and exact column feature right here you can see the accuracy is 100 percent all the values are correctly predicted right loss is only this much and it's required zero second for my zero and 159 milliseconds for one step right so this is the entire prediction part right but if you want to go for the exact calculation how you can go for the testing part so we are going to print this one let me go for this value here and for the prediction i'm going to create this predictions is equal to model dot predict x right and then i'm going to set my threshold value is equal to 0.5 and then for binary prediction because this is binary prediction only 0 and 1 output i'm going to check np dot where condition predictions greater than and equal to this one threshold right when this condition will be true it will represent one otherwise it will be represented by zero so this is my binary prediction finally i'm going to print in this binary output so this is my predict output prediction so let me run this code maybe we will get okay you can see here we are getting exact 0 and 1 due to this where condition so instead of probability which be tricky to understand uh, but you can see you can check this analyze this this 0, 0, 0, 001 with your actual target value here you can see this is 0, 0, 0, and 1 right we have this one right so so we have this complaint module okay so can we go for the very less epochs let's say one zero and then we are going to predict this one so here you can see again it's showing good accuracy going to check my model it's again giving correct accuracy and again model is giving correct output there right hence we have created these proper neural network for this end operator right and this neural network is having optimal weights and optimal respective age value and respective weight batch size respective epochs and respective iterations there okay